Hello friends, welcome to Electrical Design Engineering YouTube channel. Today is lecture number 12 of our free course ETAP. In today's lecture, we will see the cable size selection using ETAP. First of all, we will see what is cable. A cable is a conductor or a group of conductors used to transmit electrical power from one place to another place. Now, what is the basic construction of the cable? The basic construction of the cable can be seen from this cross section of the cable. This is the cross section of the cable. This is called the outer jacket and this is called the armoring and this is called the insulation sheath and this is called the insulation and this is called the conductor shield and this is the conductor. The basic construction of cable typically includes several components. Conductor, this is the core of the cable, usually made of copper or aluminum and which carries the electrical current. Insulation is surrounded the conductor. The insulation material generally are PVC, rubber or polythene or cross liquid polythene, prevents electrical leakage and protection against short circuits. Shielding, some cables include shielding layer made of metal like aluminum or copper to protect against electromagnetic interference. Armor For added protection, especially in, in the harsh environment tunnels, cables may have an armorer layer made of steel or aluminum to guard against physical damage. Outer sheath The outer sheath layer often made of a durable material like PVC or polyethylene provides overall protection against environmental factors such as moisture, chemicals, and abrasion. The standards which govern the cable size selection are given here. I can talk about the standards which are usually in the e tab. The first is BS7671. It governs the installation of single core and three core cables, both above ground and underground, for cables with nominal voltage up to and including 1000 volt AC and 1500 volt DC. IEEE 399. It provides guidelines for installation of cables in underground duct directly buried. The calculations are based on ampacity and base conditions and adjustment factors, that is, generating factors derived from detailed calculation using the Nehar Magritte method. ICEA P54 it provides guidelines for the installation of cable in above ground tries using calculated derating factors based on cable tri size, cable fill, and environmental conditions. NEC and FPA70 provides guidelines for installation of cables in above ground tries, above ground conductors, iron droppers, underground directly buried, and underground conductors. In NEC standards, the selected cables base ampacity must comply with the ampacities listed in the tables from NEC Article 310 and Appendix B. IEC 60364, it governs the installation of single core and three core cables, both above ground and underground, for cables with nominal voltage up to and including 1000 volt AC and 1500 volt DC. IEC 60502, it governs the installation of single core and three core cables, both above ground and underground for cables with nominal voltage above 1 kV to 36 kV AC. IEC 60092 it provides guidelines for the installation of single core and three core cables. Cable installation intended for fixed electrical systems on ships with nominal voltage up to 15 kV AC. Now what is the proper size of cable? So we can see the cable size is proper when it satisfies three conditions. Proper cable size means the cable should satisfy three conditions. One is the ampacity criteria, that is the load criteria. And that means the cable should be able to carry the load current. It should not get damaged on the load current. Voltage drop criteria, that means the cable should have uh, the voltage drop within the limit. So whatever the limit has prescribed, it should have a voltage drop in that limit. Short circuit credit that the cable should uh, withstand the short circuit current as per the protection device setting for the time as per the protection device setting. Thank you. Damn.